Howdy my total as always tubular gamers we're back with you guessed it another video for today's video we're gonna have a fun one we're talking about the 20 best cell shaded video games yeah you like cell shading oh we're gonna talk a lot about cell shading today so cell shading what exactly is cell shading well i'm so glad you asked according to adobe.com cell shading is a computer rendering technique often used in animation particularly japanese style manga and anime but as this video shows there's plenty of video games that also use cell shading i love the aesthetic of cell shaded games I really enjoy the aesthetic of cell shading. I think it looks really cool and unique. I love how the colors are so vibrant and they pop. And I genuinely believe that it's one of the best art styles or aesthetics for a video game. Obviously, as time goes on, graphics age. What we thought looked amazing 20 years ago doesn't exactly look great. But you know what always ages incredibly well? Cell shaded art styles. Games that came out 20, almost 30 years ago with a cell shaded art style or aesthetic still look good even nowadays. It's aged incredibly well. So yeah, for today's video, we're going to be talking about 20 awesome cell shaded video games. This list is in no particular order and it was pretty hard to limit it down to just 20. Honestly, I could do like a top 50 cell shaded games and I'd still be missing games. So I guess this is more of my curated list of 20 awesome cell shaded games that you should actually check out. As always, let me know down below. There are plenty, and I mean plenty of cell shaded games that I'm not talking about today that are also pretty good, so you can let me know what I should have had on the list instead. And of course, whether you agree or disagree, etc, etc. Please like, share, comment, subscribe. I got the Patreon and the Super Thanks all your support is truly greatly appreciated seriously thank you all so so very much all your support really does mean the world to me so let's just get right into it and talk about some cell shaded games now when thinking about cell shaded video games what came to my mind immediately and probably most people's is dragon ball dragon ball really is like the poster child when it comes to cell shading every 3d dragon ball game has cell shading so the real question obviously becomes which Dragon Ball game are you choosing for this list? There's so, so many, whether it's the many fighting games, 2D or 3D, one of the RPGs, one of the spin-offs, or the weird titles. Well, I'm going with Dragon Ball Z Kakarot. This game came out back in 2020. I remember getting it at release and thoroughly enjoying it. While I don't think it's the very best of the Dragon Ball games, it's the Dragon Ball game I want to talk about today. Now, Kakarot is a bit different from most Dragon Ball games. It's not a fighting game whatsoever. It's actually a single-player, open-world, narrative-driven. It actually does an excellent retelling of the Z saga, and it even has a bunch of the weird filler episodes that really didn't mean much in the grand scheme of things, like when Goku has to go get a driver's license. So, needless to say, there is a lot of fan service. When it comes to the combat, it's... Dragon Ball Z combat. It's very button mashy and you'll be doing these big powerful moves, sending people flying, shooting Kamehamehas, and generally just going pretty nuts. There isn't a lot of depth to this and it is rather button mashy, but it still is fun. When it comes to the graphics, it is a very strong cell shaded art style that really makes it look like the actual anime or manga. I love how this game looks from the environments that are just so vibrant and generally full of life to the character models, which I also think look very good. The animation is more than solid enough and yeah, it really looks like Dragon Ball. On top of this, the frame rate is buttery smooth no matter how much crazy shit is going on and you have one of the best looking cell shaded games. I'm sure 20 years from now, this game is still going to look pretty good because the art style really is that good. And it certainly helps that I think this is a pretty good game. While I know not everybody likes it and there's probably plenty of people that are like you should have chosen one of the many, many fighting games. I thought I'd be a little different today, choose the single player game that I quite enjoyed. The game's got a pretty good length to it, it's got a good pace, it took around like 30-ish hours. And there's actually a ton of side content in this game that I didn't even do. There's also a bunch of DLC for it now, like they've been updating this game with DLC for years now and they don't really show any sign of stopping. And so if you like the show or you like anime in general and you haven't tried this one, I think you're really sleeping on it, it is a good time. When thinking of cell shaded games, something else that comes to mind pretty much immediately is Zelda. There have been quite a few cell shaded games in the Zelda series, but I always think back to that first cell shaded game, The Wind Waker. Specifically that original GameCube game. I got this game as a kid, it was like the first Zelda game I'd ever really gotten into, and it's one of my favorites to this day. It's just a fantastic game overall, and the art style, oh it is so good. 
And it's kind of funny because initially when this game was announced, a lot of people were really hesitant about the art style. They weren't digging it, they wanted something more gritty and realistic, but I'm pretty sure all those people stopped talking once they actually got the game and realized just how good it is. It's crazy, this game is like 20 years old and I think it still looks incredible. I think it's one of those games that'll just look good eternally, like it'll look great forever, 20 years, 30 years, 50 years. This game looks better than some games released nowadays. I think this game looks better than some Zelda games that came out after this. I think it even looks a little better than Skyward Sword, which has its own art style that does look great also, but I just think Wind Waker looks incredible. I love how the characters and models look. I love the actual shading itself, like the shading, it just looks so ridiculously good in this game. The environments look great. I love how like the water looks. I don't have a single bad thing to say, genuinely, about the presentation, and I don't have much to complain about with the gameplay either. It is your pretty standard 3D Zelda game, but it does have a unique twist on it. The whole world is actually flooded, so you'll have to get everywhere by boat, and I've always liked the sailing in this game. I know it's not for everybody, but I quite enjoyed it. There's plenty of dungeons to go through, the combat. While it's pretty basic, I still enjoy it. There's plenty, and I mean plenty of puzzles to solve in this game. You'll get a bunch of new tools, and then you'll have to use those tools to solve puzzles. And then the game has a pretty awesome story. I really enjoy the story of Wind Waker. It starts out with incredibly humble beginnings, but it eventually evolves and becomes something much more. The story, just like the art style, it's pretty timeless stuff. There was the re-release on Wii U where the game also looks incredible. The lighting is just crazy on the Wii U version. I don't know why it hasn't hit the Switch yet. Hopefully the Switch or Switch 2 gets it soon because everybody should try this game. And there's plenty of other great cell shaded Zelda games like Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom, but today I wanted to talk about Wind Waker. Okay, so if Dragon Ball and Zelda didn't come to mind immediately when thinking about cell shaded games, I'm gonna guess then Persona 5 came to you immediately. Persona 5 is one of the most stylish video games ever released. There is very few video games that can really match Persona 5 style, and I have no doubt that in 20, 30, 50 years, people are still going to be saying how this game just looks incredible. The art style for this game is just crazy good. The cell shading really is off the chain when it comes to Persona 5, everything, literally every single aspect has just this awesome style and swagger to it from the characters, whether it's in game or during the cutscenes, they all look great, the environments just look fantastic. And then the user interface, the user interface for this game just goes so hard. There's not many cell shaded games where even the user interface is crazy cell shaded, but this is one of those games. It is one of the most beautiful games just ever. And it's not only because of the environment and how the game looks, it's the menus. The menus in this game just look so freaking good. Like you don't truly realize just how good this game's menus look until you play, you know, plenty of other RPGs and you're like, damn, that Persona 5 menu, it goes so hard. And the Persona series really in general has gone pretty hard with their menus, especially Persona 3 Reload. That game has an incredible looking user interface, but I'm sticking with Persona 5 here. I love the color red and I really just am picking up what this game is putting down when it comes to the art style and the graphics. When it comes to the gameplay, it is part of the greater Shin Megami Tensei series and it very much plays like that. But Persona's always had that unique twist of being a JRPG but also like a life simulator where you get to live in Tokyo and you get to actually, you know, go to school get a job and form relationships with other characters. Then of course you go into the dungeons and do the dungeon crawling, you fight bosses, fuse personas, change out equipment, yada yada yada. This game does have some fantastic dungeons in it as well. Persona 3 and 4 had randomized dungeons, not this game, they're all handcrafted and they're really great. These games, and particularly Persona 5, are also crazy long, but that's okay because you're gonna wanna be looking at this game for a long time since it is so good looking. But if you're looking for one of the very best JRPGs of all time, look no further than Persona 5. Now, another cell shaded game that really cuts deep for me is Jet Set Radio, but I'm actually not going to talk about Jet Set Radio. Instead, I'm going to talk about the spiritual successor Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. As much as I love Jet Set Radio in future, I think Bomb Rush Cyberfunk is actually the better game, and when it comes to the art style, yeah, it's basically the same as future, where it's a little low on the polygons, but it really has this art style that just pops more than anything else. Like, just look at this game, and you can see everything popping in front of your eyes, from the shading itself to the environments 
elements to the character models like it just looks crazy cool and there's really not many games that look like this. In fact I could probably count on two hands how many video games I've played that genuinely do look like this and I just really love this game's aesthetic. Like from the moment I booted it up I was like oh yes this is exactly what I wanted. And sure, while this game might not be as iconic or memorable as Jet Set in its locations, characters, and gangs, I still think it is just a fantastic game from a presentation standpoint. The music is also like crazy good in this game as well. When it comes to the actual gameplay, it is a mix of a 3D platformer and extreme sports games. This game definitely leans more on the platforming though than Jet Set ever did. A lot of the game legit is 3D platforming, whether you're grinding on rails, sliding across a wall or making some big ass jump and doing some cool tricks there's plenty of platforming here and yeah you can do tricks there is some combat it's really basic and shitty and it barely even shows up there's a lot of areas to explore and the game was just an absolute joy to play it was genuinely one of my favorite experiences of 2023 and if you're somebody that likes extreme sports games or 3d platformers this game is an absolute must play and of course, it doesn't help that the graphics are, you know, just fantastic. I seriously really love how this game looks. I wish more games looked like this. It just, it looks so good. So another cell shaded game that doesn't get talked about enough in my opinion is Beautiful Joe. Now if you've forgotten about Beautiful Joe or you don't even know who he is, I can't necessarily blame you. It's been almost 20 years since the last Beautiful Joe game, but the original Beautiful Joe was released on the GameCube and PS2 and it's a fantastic beat em up. It was made by Capcom, specifically Clover Studio, who eventually would become Platinum Games and man, this game just has such a great look to it. It has an amazing aesthetic, it goes for that comic book inspired cell shading that I just can't get enough of. It really does try its best to look like a comic book. It's all about our man Joe, who goes to see a superhero movie but actually ends up getting sucked into the movie. And the game, yeah, it really tries to look like the comics I grew up with and I really love the shading in this game. The environments look so nice and the character models, oh yeah, all these years later, they still look great. This game is like 20 years old and you wouldn't even know it thanks to the amazing art style and just how well it's aged graphically. The game also has a very stylized user interface and menus as well. The whole game just has this incredible aesthetic to it that very few other games have ever even replicated. There was a few other Beautiful Joe games and while those games are good to okay, I don't really think any of them ever top that original game. This is just one of the very best beat-em-ups of all time and certainly the best beat-em-up like on the GameCube. I played it a ton as a kid, it was hard as balls, but I played a ton of it as a kid and I've always loved this game. It's incredibly satisfying. You can do some crazy stylish moves also in this game, like Joe can really pull off some cool shit and all these years later, oh it has aged just incredibly well. This game, it was fun then, it's fun now, and I really genuinely have no idea why it has not been re-released. Capcom is very good with their re-releases, especially as of late, so why hasn't Beautiful Joe come back? More people need to experience this game. Beautiful Joe is very forgotten, and that's a damn shame because it really is one of the best looking games from that entire entire era of gaming. So another game from that era with a very unique cell shaded art style also published by Capcom is Killer7. Now Killer7 was directed by Suda51 who has made a ton of crazy games from Lollipop Chainsaw to Shadows of the Damned, Killer7, No More Heroes, etc. But I gotta say when it comes to his craziest game of all time, I really don't think any of them have ever gotten as just batshit insane as Killer7 does. Like the entire premise of the game is wild where there are seven killers into one person and you go take out targets. The entire gameplay style is just wholly unique where it's like a rail shooter. You can only move forward and back and of course go into first person and kill enemies. The characters themselves are just very strange and the game is just low-key nonsensical at times. But it genuinely is one of the most unique gaming experiences I have ever, and I mean ever have. And when it comes to this game's art style and how it looks graphically, there really has never been another game like it. It's just kind of hard to describe, I guess I'm not articulate enough with my words and descriptions, but it has a very distinct, unique art style that, again, has never been replicated again. From the way that the characters look, to how they animate, to the environments, the lighting in particular in this game just goes off the chain to create just some striking visuals that will ultimately leave this game in your head rent free just because of how weird it looks. Like there's nothing that even looks remotely close to this and 
I don't even know how somebody would go and recreate this art style, seriously. It just looks so off. The game also has just a ton of crazy visual flair to it, like when you kill enemies and blood just flies everywhere, but not in the sense that you would think. Or the way that some of these environments look, yeah, it's just an incredibly strange game when it comes to its presentation, but it's more than just the presentation, the soundtrack, the story, the characters, the entire gameplay style. It's strange, it's different, and there's a reason so many people still love this game. There's just nothing else like it. It's sued as craziest game, and it really is one of the weirdest video games ever made. Alright, so here we got a personal favorite of mine. We have The Wolf Among Us. Now, if you're unfamiliar with The Wolf Among Us, this is one of those telltale narrative-driven games. It is based off of the comic book series Fables, and it absolutely does its damnedest to look like that comic book series, but in 3D. And in my opinion, they completely succeed. When I think of the ideal comic book to video game transition, at least graphically, I think of The Wolf Among Us. Like, I just absolutely love how this game looks. I remember loving how it looked 10 plus years ago when I first played it and nowadays I'm like yeah this game still looks great it's actually aged incredibly well it's honestly aged even better than a bunch of games that came out around the same time like this game is still a really great looking game I love the shading in this game on everything from the characters to the lighting to the environments like it all looks really nice I'll give a special shout out to the lighting and the shadows like they just go so hard in this game they really create a mood a scene an aesthetic and not only does it really capture a certain vibe that this game is going for but it just has a very unique look to it. It also helps that the animation is actually really solid and this game just has a certain level of detail that I really actually like. I also like this game's interface, it is rather basic, there's not a lot going on since at the end of the day it is a very narrative driven experience, but the interface looks pretty nice too. When it comes to what this game actually is, like most Telltale games, it is an adventure game, I guess a bit of a graphic novel, it's not really like a point and click adventure game, there's no puzzles or anything like that, you get to play through five episodes that tell a unique story in the world of fables about Bigby Wolf, a sheriff who's just trying to enforce the law in a small area of New York with other legendary fabled characters like Snow White shows up, the Three Little Pigs, Toad, etc, etc. But there's a very dark atmosphere, a very mature overtone to every single aspect. This is a mature, dark story that does not have a lot of happy moments to it. It also lets you make a number of choices, and unlike most Telltale games, these choices, for the most part, actually mean something. You can get completely different outcomes and endings, and the game is very replayable. It's one of my very favorite Telltale games. I think it's just got an excellent story to it. The characters are really likable and interesting, and that art style, ooh, it's just so striking, and it looks really great. And so here we have another recent cell shaded game and that is Hi-Fi Rush and it's actually going to get a sequel now which is pretty incredible news. Hi-Fi Rush really just came absolutely out of nowhere and kind of blew everybody out of the water. Not only was it like the best Xbox game in the last few years but it was a great game in its own right and it's actually cell shaded. The game has a very nice unique art style to it that has plenty of somewhat realistic elements to it but then the shading just goes wild in this game. The environments look great. The animation is top notch in this game whether it's in game or in the cutscenes like I absolutely love the animation it looks so good in this game everything is so fluid and it just comes together the animation alone is really great but then the way the characters look the attention to detail how great those environments are the lighting in general is really great yeah this is a real looker of a game, like I really do love how Hi-Fi Rush looks, and when it comes to the gameplay, oh it is so much fun. It's actually this really unique interesting premise where it's a mix of a rhythm game and like a character action game, so you want to stay to the beat, and while at first it might not click with you, after an hour or two, it's really going to come together. The whole game's going to have you in tune, you're really going to feel in rhythm, and you just feel like an absolute badass. Like I could not believe just how in tune I was, like I have no sense of rhythm, I'm the first this person from rhythm and even I kind of got into this game's rhythm and I had an absolute blast the combat is fun there's a bunch of unique moves there's platforming the game's got an excellent pace to it constantly keeping things interesting and engaging there's plenty of really great set pieces the characters are super likable like the story and characters are like almost shockingly likable like legit they're all great how often does that happen nowadays it feels like everybody's got something to complain about with characters of the story but not high fry rush it's just kind of unanimously loved especially the main character chai i really love him can't wait to see more of him i'm so glad that like the studio got picked up and 
they're actually going to make a sequel to this game, I'll be there day one because this original game, it was just fantastic and it is worth playing. Well, I tried to go a few videos without talking about it, but I have failed. Here we have Transformers Devastation. I've talked about this game plenty, and here I am to talk about it again because it has a great art style to it. I love how this game looks. It tries to look like the old Transformers cartoons, but of course in 3D, and it just has a really strong cell shaded look. There's a ton of fan service to the old Transformers games. The animation is top notch, especially the actual transforming itself. Oh, and they got the sound effect totally down. The moves look really cool. All the special effects look really great. The environments are well detailed. The lighting, oh, it's really awesome. The shading is good, and I've talked about this game plenty of times. It's all about the Transformers going up against the Decepticons and devastation in general. It's a great hack and slash character action game by Platinum Games. Yes, the same Platinum Games that made Nair Automatopoeia, and it's a ton of fun. Unfortunately, it has been delisted, but I'm hopeful it will come back one day, and you should absolutely play it. The art style really does also hold up. And we'll see if I can go more than two or three videos without talking about this game again, but we'll see. So here we have a game I don't think I've ever talked about on the channel, and that is Red Steel 2. Now, I rarely talk about Wii games, but I will say Red Steel 2 really is one of the very best. I remember it came out like right around when the Wii Motion Plus did, and as such was very reliant on the motion controls, but it actually worked incredibly well and really added to the experience. The premise of this game was pretty wild. It's like a samurai cowboy western where you play as, yeah, a samurai cowboy who goes around with a katana and a gun just taking out this rival clan one goon at a time and it's actually incredibly fun the katana feels great the motion controls add to the experience the weapons are great the game has a good pace to it it kind of feels on rails and i feel like there haven't really been many games like this since i mean i guess there is fruit ninja but there haven't really been any games like this since it's also one of the most underrated ubisoft games of them all yeah the game was actually made by ubisoft and it's just such an improvement on that original game the original game was dog shit and some Thing that this game improved on from the original game and the reason it's even on this list is it has a really nice cell shaded art style to it. Yeah, it kind of does scream early 2010s in its presentation and aesthetic, but I actually really still like how this game looks when it comes to the art style and really the presentation in general. The character models look good, the environments actually do look really nice and there is a good amount of shading. The lighting in general looks good and it really is able to set the tone for this entire game. The lighting, shadows, and just general aesthetic really put off a certain vibe for Red Steel 2. One day I'll talk more in depth about this game, but just know that Red Steel 2 it has a nice art style, it's a fun hack and slash with some really cool combat, and it really is one of the most forgotten games of all the 2010s. The game totally could use a re-release, but it really could only be re-released on VR and the Switch with motion controls. Like, I feel like if they re-released it and you're just playing it with a controller, it wouldn't have the same impact, it wouldn't be anywhere near as good. But hey, here's hoping that one day it does get a re-release or some kind of VR support. A VR version of Red Steel 2 I feel like would be pretty amazing, especially if they updated the visuals, but this is Ubisoft we're talking about here. Who knows what the hell's gonna happen with them. They probably forgot they even own this game. But I didn't. It's Ubisoft's best cell shaded game. Yes, it's even better than Prince of Persia 2008. That game's fine, but it ain't Red Steel 2. Alright, it would honestly feel criminal if I did an entire list on cell shaded games and I didn't include cell damage. I mean, it's literally in the title of the game. It's called Cell Damage because it is a cell shaded video game. This is the car combat game that came out in the early 2000s. And while it's not the best car combat game of them all. In fact, there's been plenty of better car combat games. This is the only one that's cell shaded that I enjoy. The game is very much supposed to be a play on Looney Tunes, where the characters are just constantly killing each other, but they can't really die. They actually just respawn, and it's all for this cartoon show. And so they'll find ways to violently kill each other in rather comical, cartoony ways. You know, they're dropping anvils, they're cutting each other in half, the works. When it comes to how this game looks, I actually rather dig the aesthetics of this game. It does try to look like Looney Tunes, but in 3D, and I think it actually still looks pretty good. This game, again, it came out in the early 2000s, and it still looks pretty nice even nowadays. It's just one of those games that has actually aged incredibly well. Sure, some of the environments can look a little drab and dull at times, but the character models, the art style, and the shading in general really allow everything to pop. I also love just how cartoony this game gets, and it gets very exaggerated with literally everything from 
the cars and characters to proportions just being completely out of whack. The deaths are incredibly cartoony. The special effects are also very cartoon-like. This game is definitely going for the Saturday morning cartoon vibe, and I feel like there's not all that many games that still go for this kind of art style, and I really like it. I love the aesthetic of this game, and the presentation probably is the best part of this game. It's an okay car combat game. I'm not going to act like it reinvents the wheel literally or it does all these new amazing innovative ideas and there's a ton of variety no this is a pretty standard car combat game that has an art style that really props it up it just i gotta talk about cell damage this is a cell shaded video game list how would i sleep at night knowing i didn't talk about cell damage for a video like this so here it is all right so a list like this you knew i had to include at least one fighting game there are so many anime fighters these days and a lot of them have cell shaded art styles but i don't think any of them are better or look any better than guilty gear strive my favorite of the guilty gear series and one of the very best modern fighting games guilty gear strive is a pretty excellent game that is still very actively played nowadays it's still getting updates and there really is a tournament scene for it and there's a reason it's an excellent fighting game and there are plenty of other good Guilty Gear games, but I don't think any of them are as good as Strive. Strive just feels and looks amazing. I mean, when it comes to this game's graphics, oh, it is crazy. Like, just look at it. It looks incredible. The models and characters have just a stupid amount of detail. The animation is sublime. The game has some excellent backgrounds to it. The interface itself is really stylized and looks great. And before every match, man, you get just some really cool looking cutscenes. There's like a story mode with some cutscenes and those look great also. Like this game, it just looks incredible. It really looks like anime come to life in a fighting game. And that entire style swagger this game has, it carries over to the gameplay as well. It is just a fantastic fighting game. It feels amazing. Like, it feels so good. It's easy to pick up and play, but there is so much to learn and understand with these characters. And it's just immensely satisfying when you start just absolutely kicking ass with the big ass moves and the long strings. Like, it's just a ton of fun. I really do enjoy fighting games and Guilty Gear Strive. It really is one of my favorite ones of all time. It's not hard to see why either. It just feels so great. There's a really good roster here. A bunch of the fan favorites are here. There's some new characters here. There's actually a decent amount of content. The online is very good. And it really isn't hard to see why there are so many people still playing this. I know there are people that prefer the older Guilty Gears and that's fine. I just prefer Strive and I think Strive is at the very least the best looking of the Guilty Gears. I don't think anyone's going to deny that one. It's a pretty game. It's a flashy game, but it's also incredibly fun. And so here we got a certified classic, we have Borderlands 2. Now there have been plenty of Borderlands games, and I've actually ranked all of them, and all of them do have a similar art style, where it's a mix of realism and cell shading to create just this unique look. And if you ask me, and I think if you ask most people, they'll say their favorite Borderlands game is Borderlands 2. It's the one I've certainly put the most amount of time into. I remember when it came out, loved it then. Ten years later, I still love it now, and I think graphically, it absolutely holds up. It doesn't hold up as well as some of these other games since it is a little bit more rooted in reality, but I still think that it does look very good. It has a nice aesthetic, and you know it's Borderlands. It's very distinct. And honestly, the series, at least graphically, has become more and more distinct over the years. But when it comes to the gameplay, I really don't think it's ever gotten any better than Borderlands 2. While it might not have the very best gunplay or the best loot mechanics, I think overall it's the best experience you can have with this series. It has a wonderful story with a fantastic antagonist. The game is genuinely funny, something I can't really say about the other games. Outside of a few jokes, the gameplay is solid enough, the loot mechanics are good, the progression is really great, the campaign is actually excellently paced, it's got a really good length to it, it's incredibly replayable, and every time I've come back to it, it's just a fun time. I really like all the character classes, and the side quests are actually totally worth doing in this game, unlike several other Borderlands games. Again, plenty of other Borderlands games do things better, whether it's the presentation, the loot, the gunplay, etc., but it all comes together for the best package in Borderlands 2. And it's great that it's cell shaded that means it'll be just kind of timeless when it comes to that presentation. It'll probably be 2035 and we'll still be going, yeah, Borderlands 2 is the best one still. All these years later, we're on Borderlands 9 and they just could not top 2. And it really just makes you go, wow, we didn't realize how good we had it when Borderlands 2 came out. Either way, it's a great game. So you thought Killer7 was going to be the only Suda51 game on here? Well, you're wrong. I got No More Heroes, Heroes Paradise. Now, the No More Heroes series has always been pretty interesting when it comes to its presentation and graphics. The first one was such a budget Wii title, 
that it just couldn't commit to like a cell shaded art style so it's this weird in between the second game clearly had more of a budget and it actually is cell shaded and then the third game has cell shaded but has a completely different type of cell shading from the prior two games and i don't really know if it looks any better than the old games but then there was the remaster of the original game known as Heroes Paradise, which was released for the PS3, and this game actually fully commits to the cell shading for the first game, and it has, like, all the best stuff from the original game. I know there are some differences here and there, and a few things might be cut, but by and large, I think this is the best of the No More Heroes series, and the best way to play the original game. Now, when it comes to the actual art style of Heroes Paradise, yeah, it is cell shaded, but it's not, like, super cell shaded. The shading doesn't go crazy, the colors aren't vibrant and popping out of this world, World, but I still think it looks decent enough and when it actually comes to this game and its gameplay and story yeah it's pretty wild it's a Suda 51 game the story is pretty crazy about Travis touchdown acquiring a beam katana not a lightsaber and trying to kill the 10 deadliest assassins in the world so he can get some poontang this dude really is that down bad and when it comes to the gameplay it's a pretty standard hack and slash character action game the combat is not all that complex it's not going to win any awards but it gets the job done and it's satisfying and man is it bloody this is one of the bloodiest games ever made there's also this really weird open world you get to explore in and do all these awkward mini games and with this actually being on the PS3 instead of the Wii, you can play it with a normal controller and have normal controls. And while it does take a little bit of the fun away, I still think this is a pretty great experience, especially if you like these types of games. But for some reason, this version is still locked to the PS3. The modern re-release is actually of the Wii game, which still is a great game, but it's not that PS3 version. So here we got a very special game, we have Dragon Quest XI. Now the Dragon Quest series has been around for a very long time and it's gone through various stages when it comes to its graphics, from being 8-bit to 16-bit to being still sprite-based on the PS1 to eventually cell-shaded 3D with Dragon Quest VIII, and really every Dragon Quest game since has been cell-shaded, trying to look more and more like anime or manga. I mean, Akira Toriyama did all of the character designs, at times it really does look like Dragon Ball, and when it comes to the Dragon Quest series, I think most people can agree the best really is Dragon Quest XI. Not just when it comes to its graphics, but overall. There are plenty of other amazing Dragon Quest games though, I really do love Dragon Quest VIII, and I think some of the spin-offs are actually way better than most people would have you believe, but Dragon Quest XI is the complete package here. And it's going to be a very good looking game for quite some time. I mean, Dragon Quest VIII came out almost 20 years ago, and I still think the game actually looks excellent. It's one of the best looking PS2 games, so yeah, I'm sure Dragon Quest XI is going to look very good. I love the shading, I love how the colors pop, the environments just look really stellar. And it's really great to see all of the monsters just come to life in this game. The animation is so great too. Dragon Quest has always had a certain charm to it that has been retained all these years later. And when it comes to the gameplay, Dragon Quest is traditional of a JRPG as it gets. While it is relatively simple, it's fast, it's easy to pick up and understand, and... It's just such an enjoyable time. It really is a joy to play. It's comfort food when it comes to the JRPG. Like Dragon Quest, you know what to expect, and you always are going to get that, and then usually a pretty good story. And the story of Dragon Quest XI is actually quite good. There's some really excellent characters here, some unexpected twists and turns, and I just really enjoy the game. The game is also very, very long with a ton of content, especially the re-releases of this game which add even more content. And really, I think it's just safe to say that Dragon Quest XI is not only one of the very best Dragon Quest games, but one of the best JRPGs ever made, and it's got that kick-ass art style. So here's a game that I don't think gets talked about enough, and that is Call of War as Gunslinger. Now the Call of War series is kind of up and down, but I think Gunslinger is actually a pretty great first person shooter, and it has a cel shaded art style. It tries to go for like that comic book aesthetic, but of course they throw like some western flair in it. And not the same kind of western flair that Red Steel 2 uses, a somewhat different western flair, and it creates a very nice looking game. This game not only has a great atmosphere, but a very unique distinct presentation where the shading actually looks very good even nowadays with the lighting and blood effects in particular just giving a really striking look. The game also loves to use saturation especially during its storytelling moments and yeah I think graphically this is a very good looking game and 10 plus years later it still is good looking. When it comes to the actual 
act of playing this video game, it is a really good first person shooter. It goes pretty nuts and it's more like a shooting gallery where you try to kill as many enemies in succession as you can. You can actually rack up combos. It's all about getting points, killing enemies in fancy ways. And then of course you have this spaghetti Western story on top of everything, complete with our main character who's narrating the whole thing, changing his story on the fly to make it seem more exaggerated. The game has an excellent, and I mean excellent pace to it. It's incredible incredibly replayable and I've actually gone back and played through this game several times because it's not all that long of a game and really I just wanted more from this game. There's some extra levels outside of the campaign that are cool but the shooting feels really nice. It's fun to try to get as many points as possible. The duels they're not so great but the overall experience just comes together in such a fun way. This might be like the best spaghetti western game of them all and you know what? It's got a really good cell shaded art style that makes it age incredibly well. Okay, y'all were probably expecting this at some point, but you knew I had to have Sly Cooper somewhere on this list, and here it is. When it comes to the Sly Cooper series, they're all very stylized, cell-shaded experiences that are some of the best stealth games ever, and when it comes to my favorite, it's actually the original. I know that might seem like a more basic take, but I've always loved the original Sly Cooper. This is the one I've played the most. I've played through this game several times, and it's now available on the PS5 also, which is pretty cool. And something that I've always really loved about this game is the art style, is the presentation, the graphics. It looks great, and not only look great for the time, but nowadays, it still looks very good. I just love how this game looks. All of the characters look amazing, the environments are great, the lighting is superb, like like, everything is just incredibly vibrant, the shading is just wonderful, and seriously, we're going on like 20 years now, it still looks good, there's still very few games that look anything like this outside of the Sly Cooper series, and this game just has so much style and personality and charm to it, I absolutely love this series, I gotta rank these games at some point, when it comes to the graphics of the original game, it still looks just phenomenal, when it comes to the gameplay, this is a really great mix of stealth and 3D platforming, mostly 3D platforming, but there are plenty of stealth elements here. There's some really great bosses, some really awesome set pieces and levels, and you can be very sneaky. The game is just mad fun all these years later. And what I always really liked about the original Sly Cooper is it's very focused. You just play as Sly and it really focuses on just the 3D platforming and the stealth elements. Another mini game or two might show up in it, but for the most part it really is just about Sly. Sly 2, 3, and 4, they focus on different gameplay styles and mini games and more gameplay variety and while that's cool and all, I really like how focused the original game is. Sure it's not the longest, but I always have found it incredibly replayable. When it comes to cell shaded stealth games, it doesn't get any better than Sly Cooper. Then again, that is pretty specific. I don't know how many cell shaded stealth games there actually are outside of Sly, but Sly 1, awesome time. Well, The Wolf Among Us wasn't the only Telltale game on this list. Here we have The Walking Dead Season 1. Now, The Walking Dead does not need an introduction. There have been plenty of games based on this franchise, and I think most people can agree that Telltale's Season 1 of The Walking Dead is not only the best Walking Dead game of them all, but one of the best adventure games of all time. And when it comes to the graphics, the art style, yeah, it is cell shaded. It goes for that comic book aesthetic. They're really honing in on the comic book roots with this one and I think it looks great. It absolutely looks like the comic book come to life in 3D. When it comes to the shading, I love it. I love how the characters look. The animation is really solid. The environments have just a really nice aesthetic to it that actually fits The Walking Dead incredibly well. Like it looks decrepit. It looks shitty and run down and that's because it is. I mean, it's The Walking Dead. The walkers look great. The lighting is pretty good for the most part. Sometimes it's a little weird. That Telltale Tool had some issues, but overall when it comes to the presentation, I think it's just excellent. The game has aged incredibly well, at least graphically. From a gameplay standard, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much timeless. There's not all that much gameplay to it. You walk around some environments and talk to characters, investigate things, and make a bunch of choices. Of course, these choices kind of matter, but not really for the most part, unfortunately. Still, this game has a wonderful story. It's all about the story. The gameplay and the graphics and all that, it can be great and all, but if the story sucks, this game falls apart. Thankfully, it really is one of the best stories of like any video game. It's really great. There's some really great characters here. The dialogue is just excellent, and it has one of the most powerful endings of any video game. Did the series go on too long? Yes. And I'm not just talking about the TV show, I'm talking about the game series also. I also think it went on just a bit too long, but it doesn't really 
detract from this first game. It's just such a great story and there's a reason it put Telltale on the map. Like this game, it really was that good and all these years later, oh I love it. So here we got another game that just doesn't get talked about enough, especially nowadays, and that is The Darkness 2. Now The Darkness 2 for the unfamiliar is a first person shooter based on the comic book series The Darkness and when it comes to how this game looks it absolutely does hone in on those comic book roots for a very unique awesome art style that has plenty of cell shading in it but it also has some realistic elements it just has this really nice aesthetic and look to it and it's games like The Darkness 2 that really make you realize just how homogenized games are when it comes to their presentation and art style nowadays anyway I love The Darkness 2 for a few reasons the art style looks really great this game has some really excellent shading and lighting, the characters look great, and the deaths and kills are very good in this game. The other reason I like it is because it's a very satisfying, fun first-person shooter. It sees you playing as Jackie who has the darkness with him, which includes these giant tentacles that spring out of him that can kill shit, and yeah, you can absolutely just rip people apart. You get plenty of awesome weapons here, and the gunplay is actually pretty satisfying, but just ripping people apart with the darkness and using the tentacle monsters, yeah, it's really good fun. There's not enough games where you have tentacle monsters with you. It's gory and violent, but it is quite satisfying. When it comes to this game's story, while it does take place after the original game, the original game is not required reading. You can totally go into the second game, still understand the story, and of course have a great time. Unfortunately, the game ends on a cliffhanger, and here we are 10 plus years later without a Darkness 3. I really hope one day we get it, because this series is pretty unique, and I feel like if they made a new one with, you know, more modern technology, but still kept the cell shaded art style, I think it would look really great. It's been what, like 12 years since The Darkness 2 came out and I still think it does look pretty good. Unfortunately, it's not really readily available outside of Steam, which is a real shame. If you're looking for an underrated, fun, pretty short first person shooter, this is a good one to play and it still feels pretty different from most shooters, even nowadays. So to end things off, we have an absolute classic and that is Okami. I've never really talked about Okami on the channel before, but I quite like this game. When it comes to the presentation, the graphics, the art style, Okami is just stunning. It is absolutely beautiful. It looked incredible when it came out almost 20 years ago and nowadays, it still looks incredible, like I love how Okami looks from the shading, the lighting, the characters, the colors, the entire art style, the cutscenes, like this is just a phenomenal looking video game. It's so characterized and individualized. There is just nothing that looks like Okami and I just love how this game looks. I could look at it all day. It looks so good. Music's also great, but when it comes to the graphics, it is undeniably a fantastic game. When it comes to the actual gameplay, it's pretty unique too seeing you play as the Wolf Amaratsu and I'd say the best comparison I could make is to a 3D Zelda game. It's pretty similar to 3D Zelda where there's some rather basic combat, you go through some dungeons, you solve a lot of puzzles, you get to paint things in the world and it's a pretty enjoyable experience. The game is actually quite long and at times it does feel like it drags a little but again that art style and the music and just the overall atmosphere of this game is so good that it kind of carries the entire game. Like the gameplay is good, the story's interesting and stuff, but I don't think it's great. The art style and just the unique vibes of this game really set it head and shoulders above most games. And I just always feel something when I'm looking at this game. Like it reminds me of my childhood and it really reminds me of a time when we could get video games that just look wildly different from each other. Nowadays, most games look kind of similar. They're all going for that realistic look and it's pretty rare when we even get modern cell shaded games and if we do it's usually based off Dragon Ball or some other anime. I miss the times where we could get realistic primitive 3D cell shaded and just games looking absolutely wild. Obviously there are plenty of wild looking games still coming out but man I just love Okami. I love this game, I love the cell shading and I just love cell shading in general. Yeah that's pretty much it if you made it to this part of the video our code word will be bricks as in what you're hopefully not going to throw through my window. Okay, we're all good here, so hope you all have a Merry Christmas. See you all later. Bye-bye now.